Hello and welcome to You Matter. Hello and welcome to You Matter, which I said in that slightly quizzical way just now, because it's actually You Matter and Chewing It Over combined, which we're going to call Chew Matter. Um, my guest today is Jack Chu, and we have a great conversation, a really fun conversation. It's always fun chatting to Jack. But as it's the first uh, first podcast recording for both of us of 2024, we wanted to have a conversation that was a little bit of a, of a reflection on 2023 and a little bit of a look forward to 2024. And um, I'm sure lots of you are in that sort of um, transition period yourself. So I hope it's a conversation you'll find relevant and enjoyable, unless of course you're not listening to this until the height of a heat wave in July, in which case it will be less relevant, but I hope you enjoyed the conversation anyway. I'll be back at the end. So hello um, to what we've decided to call Chew Matter. Well, I decided to call it Chew Matter and I've just told Jack and he's agreed, so that's good. <laughs> I'm glad you've clarified that. that. Most people would have definitely thought that sounds like what that arrogant prick would have called it <laughs> if he'd have chosen. So you are admitting it wasn't me. Yeah, no, it was my choice. Chew Matter, first episode of You Matter and Chewing It Over in 2024. Am I right, Jack? You haven't done a Chewing It Over okay. already? No. Yeah. So I thought it'd be nice to invite Jack on today just to have a bit of a chat. The year has turned. We've all just done Christmas and New Year. And it's a funny old time. Everybody tends to approach those those events in different ways. Um, and I thought it would be quite nice to start the year off with a chat with Jack, a bit about the year that's just gone and a bit about the year that's coming up. And thankfully he said yes. And thankfully he agreed to call it Chinata. <laughs> so hi, Jack. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Joe. I had a fun, I had a fun patient this morning where uh, she said, hi, Jack. I said, hi, Jean. We both realised that they were both words. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Is that the first time enjoyed. both of you had realised that in your lives of being called Jack and Jean? <laughs> well, I just think it was, uh, it was just, we both had this momentary realisation. Um, and we also had the same debate, which was that we did the whole Happy New Year thing. And it's like, before we get to, you know, frivolous topics, let's t tackle the most important one. How long is it appropriate? Oh, God. I so get that. I said to Ian last night, my husband, I said, oh, do you get really fed up of having to start every email and text at this time of year? I hope you had a lovely Christmas and a happy new year. You don't really care what the answer is, but you just have to do it. It's, yeah, it's how long is, how long is yeah. too long? I, have I'm, a good Christmas, busy yeah. one, oh, a bit quiet, all oh, right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's cliches, isn't it? But I think it's like you've got two options. You've got just this week, I think it's, yeah. it's appropriate. But then you can't help if it's the first time you've seen someone. And that can extend, but if it extended beyond January, that'd be mental, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think so. Be yeah. Enough. Well, I, as you can imagine, I am very conscious of social etiquette always. Yeah. Like I'm massive, sure. massive, like uh, go through. I struggle to know what to do with myself if I'm not prim and proper. So it's big, big <laughs> issue for me. So I'm glad we've been able to do that on air. <laughs> for years, I've not been able to write Xmas. I have this little internal voice that that won't let me write that. Like, I don't it's mind religious. <laughs> if you said Xmas, you'd, have, you'd, you'd feel blasphemous. I don't think that's the reason. <laughs> I'm quite happy <laughs> to write... my grandma. My grandma hated Xmas for oh, that really? reason, so I'm amused if it's the same. Oh, maybe some person at some point in my life has said that. I'm quite happy to write <laughs> H-N-Y, Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, Xmas. No, can't do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, because Jesus is watching you. That's why. That's, you just underestimated it. At least you're it's ages to write Christmas. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> and you say Xmas, write Xmas, and you'd be like, dabbing <laughs> holy water on your forehead. Right. Anyway, what, what were we going to talk about? I can't remember now. <laughs> um, this is it. We were just going to randomly chat. Um, so, well, Jack, last year, how was, how was 2023 for you? Big question. Yeah, yeah better than reflections. better than better than 2022 but prog progress in a number of ways it was it was it was a bit tidier there's some consolidation both at home and it and at work as you know I, but people might not know but i um i moved house this time last, well, not, like december last year and, and that was oh, quite yeah. rushed and do you remember that um would have ideally have done that a bit steadier but just a few things uh that meant that we needed to get on with that which meant that it was a bit chaotic and stuff so so yeah, I'd, uh, it's been it's settled down from there. 
and we've managed to. I feel like I've caught with my tail a little bit, and mm. um, and and that's that feels good. Um, so it was it was it was nice, but it was still, I still feel like I'm torn between. I'm comfortable that we're still rebuilding and getting my bearings from COVID, both as okay. a person and a business. But it coincides with so many different changes, both personally and professionally, from associated to COVID, as well as we had kids like December 19 and stuff, right? And so I'm now, on one hand, always looking on at everything through that lens, and because it, it feels still relevant for me. But then I'm also really conscious of like, how much are you just going to blame COVID? Like, how long are you going to just get over it, Chew? Like, I, I, I have this moment every now and again where I'm just like, I've got to stop. Like, is that is that is that an evergreen excuse for me for some stuff? Is it a really valid reference point? Is it something that just coincided with big changes in my life that I'm, I'm over associating? So I, I have got that admittedly knocking around. But if I reflect as you do this time of year, how was last year better than the year before? And this year will be better than it. And because there is still some tidying up to be done, uh, especially psychologically for me. So that's kind of uh, my ex classically excessively deep answer to that question. It, how was yours? <laughs> I'll come to that in a minute, but I just want to ask you something. Yeah, that's fine, so, that's fine. Um, do you think there's anything in the fact that a lot of your big success and you really coming on the physio scene actually happened in COVID? And some might argue almost because of COVID, I'm thinking of the therapy live and, and chewing it over. You know, the things that um, enabled you to really become very visible in physio. Do you think COVID almost feels like, oh, that was then, can I do it in non-COVID times? Yeah, I think there's there's something to be said for that, and I think that it's interesting to you frame it that way because I don't disagree. But I think that that is that is you're not alone in thinking and seeing it that way. But the data doesn't necessarily play that out. So okay. I I had to be much more commercially savvy. I had to literally do the, the innovations you're talking about were part of the keep the show on the road, keep the lights on mm. completely. So. So there was a, a visibility and, and, a, and a personal leadership. I needed to really grow and lead on that stuff and be be quite a focal point on that stuff. But actually, in terms of my impact and a lot of the other work that I'd done before that was no less at scale in many ways, right? Yeah. So, so Physio Matters' existence up to that point set the scene for what I was then able to do. I, I, it wasn't from, from scratch. It's just that there are people, yourself included, who were much more aware of our stuff mm -hmm. from then, which, which therefore I'm not countering, but it's just that I bet you can imagine, therefore, psychologically, that a, a doubt would answer uh, that that much mm -hmm. because because I've I had, I had some success and influence uh, and impact elsewhere prior to that that gave that gave rise to it so it depends where you first engage with our stuff as to why it might feel that way but i, yeah. I as much as i'd love to grab that reason uh, by, by uh, that, you, that you've almost given me there it probably isn't because um if anything um no the the, the most the most intimidating elements of it um that i'm trying to catch up with myself on certainly came 2015 16 you know, when we're okay. doing the big, when we're doing the big R's and stuff like that, that was some of the most intimidating, complex, political, controversial stuff we were doing. And and so, um, weirdly, I, I probably couldn't use that excuse. I think it, it's just more of a more of an overwhelmed thing. And I I think at the heart of it, I can't blame COVID. I think I I was in various ways completely underprepared for parenthood. So I think that on a deeper level, I think that's probably the biggest the yeah. biggest change. And 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 so that that was gets conflated a bit with that stuff if i'm honest so yeah it's it's, a, it's an interesting one and i don't know and i think it's hard for me to not to be authentic in answering that question i, I can't help but still use that lens and i think that that's funny because I, i've got to eventually you've got to stop doing that everything mm -hmm. can't be you can't be how many years post covid like it's it's like 2000 bc right ad <laughs> I'm, I'm doing that all the time still I, I, everything is still referenced from then and I need to try and work through that. Yeah, you're right. And everything you hear, every anecdote you hear on the radio or the TV, people not even connected with healthcare, there's still this thing I've noticed I do where I go, oh, they said that happened in 2021. Was that pre-COVID? Were we in lockdown then? And it's the reference point for how you judge what they're describing. Um, and it, yeah. it'll take us all a long time to get past that. Interesting you say about parenthood. <laughs> My initial response is, has it ever been finally the person in the history of the universe that was prepared for parenthood? Um, <laughs> But it answers a little bit about my year as well. So 
um, my 2023, a large part, certainly the first half of that, my kids did GCSEs and A-levels last year. So um, there was a very much a parenting element to that. And um, I found myself deliberately resisting getting drawn into the, um, how's it going? You know, has it been family? Is it really stressful? And loads of my uh, friends locally were going through the same thing because you, a lot of your friends are the ones that you got to know when your kids were born, aren't they? It's natural progression. And yeah. I think I've always had a, had a resistance or I tried to resist getting drawn into these conversations that whip up um, sort of uncomfortable feelings. And it, I'm sure it's a self-protection mechanism. Like, you know, I don't want to feel like, I don't want to feel like the whole family's stressed for six months and just can't cope with that. So I did a lot of, oh, no, it's fine. You know, they're doing a bit of revision and I'm a little bit worried about this one, but that one's okay. And, um, and then when it was all over, which wasn't really till three quarters of the way through the year, it's end of August by the time you get the results. Yeah. I was, then I was honest and oh my God, that was quite hard alongside running businesses and, and all the things you do in the rest of life. So I think a lot of my 2023 was, for my kids, it was dominated by them actually doing it. A large part of my year was dominated by trying to pretend it wasn't as stressful as actually it, it really was. Um, and then quite a bit of relief and they were both fine. And then I really did enjoy that last um, few months of the year, probably because that pressure was off. Um, but I like, I actually really like autumn. Um, I quite like the dark. My daughter and I both talk about this a lot. We quite like the season going to the shorter days and the darkness. And you know, right. a lot of people just desperate for the solstice when it all turns, isn't it? But I yeah. quite like that kind of cosy end of the year. And I did have a nice Christmas. I've been telling people this week that um, we have a big family Christmas and nobody fell out with anybody, which by anybody's Christmas, that's got to be a great result. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Because yeah. you, you, you didn't invite me. Yeah, yeah uh, if if you need to, you need you need it shaken up, then I'll I'll turn we'll up. Get you on day. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's great, and I'm glad to hear that. I think what's funny is that the age gap between your kids is relevant there as well, isn't it? Where um, I remember my parents, because it's similar to man. I think your two are at least similar to sort of the age gap between me and my sister. Where yeah. at one point, especially because then my youngest sister, it was a bigger gap as the third child. They then ended up if. It was, uh, you know, my, by the time I'm having my GCSEs, they then had major exams for like six or seven years or something because, mm -hmm. basically because you had AS levels then. So it was like my GCSEs, yeah. then then Alex is doing her GCSEs and I'm doing my AS levels. Then it just moves up. Um, not that I ever kept them. Once I'd, once I'd gone to uni, they, they should have probably been more concerned about my education than they were. But it was certainly just in terms of the GCSE come A level time, then it just meant that things move up. So it can compact, can't it? Like it's it's intense enough for one. But when it's when it's two, and especially because they'll have, as any humans would have, you know, their unique challenges associated mm -hmm. to it, of which you need to make sure it's not too generic. But then equally, you want to make sure you're, you're fair and even handed as well. So I remember my parents and much later than reflecting on that time as being intense. So, yeah, I don't look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a few years, a few good years. I hope so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not school I'm... yet. So that'd be weird for that would be especially neurotic for me to worry about that, wouldn't it? Uh, before <laughs> yeah, they're even don't at start school. <laughs> Your friends will be in the right state if you start now. I, I've been thoughtful actually about you matter and episodes this year and, and um, being a parent and being a clinician is one of the things that might be quite interesting to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, so, so I've just done these sessions with Carly Gibson about um, being a clinician with neurodiversity um, and dyslexia in, in Carly's case. And actually it was back in 2022, I talked to Martin who quite rightly said, I don't want to be the physio with depression, but we talked about what it was like for him being a physio and, and having mm. bouts of depression. And I thought actually one of my thoughts for you, Matter, this year is perhaps to talk a bit more about what is it like being a physio and because we all are or a clinician and um, mm. if we're, so, we're so aware that our patients are not a sprained ankle, they are a sprained ankle and everything that goes along with that person. But um, I think sometimes clinician trumps everything else. Some, you know, or at least it does when you interact with each other. I think yeah. because that's your shared identity, you can't help but centre it. 
And even though you know that you're a much more complex tapestry than Yushi clinical or professional work, your linkage to them means that that's kind of how you can't help but see them. And it might sometimes be the primary thing of which you know of them. And so I think that that's one of the things that I think of, I'd be great. I think you'd do some great. That would be a really nice angle for sure. And um, have you got a chance to listen to Chewy and Jim yet? The, um, Not all of it. Cause, uh, actually, no, cause, it is, cause yeah. Yeah. Part of it was inspired by your, uh, well, you know, I basically asked Jim, I think it's in this one, where I just say like about the fact that are we, have we not been as upfront as we maybe could have been about neurodiversity of mm -hmm. ourselves and each other in the ways in which then people constantly hook on and go, how do you or why do you do things like you do? I where have to no, but it would be, be interesting because it, not, that you, not, not that you need to. I mean, you do need to, but I mean, in this instance, you don't need to. For me to make this point yeah. is that it was from off the back of yours and Carly's um, podcast moving us both to reflect on that uh, because it's not something we'd ever been conscious of hiding, but then we were similarly probably. Um, it's not a clean line where personality disposition meets neurodiversity because of the nature of any given spectrum on any given particular issue and something mm -hmm. that therefore we felt a bit more obliged to lean into and, and it was inspired by that work. So yeah, one for you and any of anyone else that hasn't watched no, that or listened to that yet. Listen to that. I'd be really interested to hear yours answer that your answer and Jim's actually. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was an interesting one. But but great. And and if you do any anything more to that effect, it'll be be brilliant. You know, you matters going from strength to strength and really found I mean it's it's always had a good identity, but it really is finding it it's such an important niche. I've told you before, and then I've pillaged your show for guests, haven't I? Like I, 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 I my guest envy and stuff, <laughs> because you guys touch on something that is so so unique, and it has it's such obvious space. I think that sometimes I'm the the nature of being such a generalist and chewing it over. It's just, it's just such breadth that means that then I just have you guys go into a a space that is so so obviously appropriately ring fenced. It's not super narrow, but it's just it's it's an obvious sort of agenda. Mm. and and that is that is really nice i want to try and see if i can learn learn when to zoom in a little tighter yeah you know because because you know me as a person i just can't prioritize a conversation <laughs> so it'll go where it needs to go and that has some charm to it and we should still do that because i like doing that but then now and again what if it's just like that's where i'm, I'm going to really sit on my hands and it's not going to go over there even if it could like yeah. tangent free zone and, and, and do some more focus work. And I think that's probably something that I'll learn from you, Matter this year. A coach friend of mine describes that as going vertical. So she says, you you know, in a conversation, you you stay horizontal. And it's a good, it's actually a good analogy for patients. You stay horizontal to make sure you cover all the territory. Um, but you, you have to set your radar and be really aware of the point where going vertical is the right thing to do. And by, you know, go down that rabbit hole because we've looked at all those things and gone, yes, this rabbit hole is important. Um, so let's consciously go down it. Um, I try and remember that one with coaching clients and with, with patients. But with you matter as well, I have the luxury of it overtly is not addressing clinical questions directly, which is, I do say that's a luxury, luxury because, you know, we all know we're dealing with the, the the clinical world and all the issues that that brings with it and it's I think it's actually nice for me because I'm interested in the space outside the the clinical stuff but also maybe that's the appeal for other people that you know the, you can just consciously park that for a moment and go yeah we know that a clinical mushroom is absolutely massive um let's talk around the outside of it a little bit and like you said about how sometimes that the understanding and recognition of each other's sort of complexities of, of their life or the the different elements of their life and I, I remember it's just it's just rung a bell that i ended up having a conversation come argument with a physio who had been somewhat irritated by not just my work but my style of online comms it's many years ago now at least five years ago and this is in person we're having this discussion someone that i've not met i've met much more online than i had in person where she couldn't help but as part of an argument come discussion sort of reflect on the fact that well you and it, a reason it's come to mind is because this childlessness thing i was I, I i didn't have kids at that point and she used that somewhat against me in a sense of saying like what well, that part of this is that you just don't you wouldn't understand without having that plate to spin with regards to family and i didn't for mm -hmm. a second then one of i wasn't in a defensive mood at all but i was just saying that well no of course of, of course not but I'm, i've never professed to 
I've never, I've never sort of implied that you or anyone should be a certain way or do anything. It's not, it's not that I'm saying that you should be spinning all these plates, but then similarly that what you're using there, because I asked a few questions as to what you even mean by that. And she meant the sort of general challenges of which she's got more to balance than she was suggesting yeah. I did. And I said, and especially at that point in my, my life, I then, I, I said, I, I can't help but just think how much of an assumption you've made though there is. I don't have mm. young children, but you've no idea as to the health of my parents or grandparents. You don't really know anything about me enough to make what, you, what you're what you assuming. You just can't help but look on and think, I couldn't do what you perceived that I was suggesting you should because of the time of which you've got other things. And therefore, you could only be saying that as someone that's childless. And it was just this failure of empathy mm. um, of which was being applied especially to someone that essentially was an avatar on the internet at that point. And the, the, but the, it was, it was bleeding into a discussion come yeah. argument in person, whereby far too much assumption was being made. And that in their defense, there is no way that I haven't had my own version of a similar sort of thing. I don't think I was doing it then. I don't think I'd done it with them, but I was just meaning that as a general rule, because there was this core identity that I was mentioning before, where we knew each other as clinicians, fellow MSK clinicians, that then the other stuff, was just was just add on rather than each of us considering that central to us mm -hmm. of which we've also got this professional thing but to each other we had a different view and that, and that was a that was a, a a clumsiness i'll never really forget and it's something that um really sprung to mind when it was the intersection between we're just talking about kids we're talking about sort of the uh, what we how we see each other um uh, the complexity of identities which come up on both our shows quite a lot don't they really um yeah. because you know it's it's somewhat on vogue but it's also you know what what is it sense of self is <laughs> pretty pretty ubiquitous isn't it mm -hmm. yeah that that argument didn't go well for andrea ledson did it <laughs> leveled it at theresa may same thing she, yeah so i know Theresa yeah Mace identify with the whole population she shouldn't have kids yeah, what, yeah, a, what a what a massive loss that's been yeah yeah where's she now God, i don't want to dare check <laughs> but you're right i mean parenting is one aspect and and you know, that's the one I picked on, but we, yeah, if I do have that approach with you, matter, it needs to be balanced and, you know, a variety of guests that, that do represent a spectrum, um, not just, not just one particular common aspect. So mm. Jack, 2024, we all, we're allowed to talk about the Magna, aren't we? Because it's out, first edition was out. <laughs> um, congratulations, it was out on the 1st Thank of January. You. So, I mean, yeah. that must have been a huge part of the end of your, I know it was a huge part of the end of your 2020, <laughs> party to some of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, tell me about that that journey, the preparation and now the, the release. Yeah. Funny and humble for you to suggest you were party to it. Of course, you were pretty pivotal and very involved, and will <laughs> continue to be. Whether you, every week. <laughs> whether you like it or not, you'll be. You, you know, you're very involved. But I think, um, yeah, it was. It was. It was a. It was a massive part at the end of the year. Quite funny as it got close towards the end of the year, people sort of starting to notice that I'd I'd been and we'd been a bit quieter than usual and. I think most of them were uh, enjoying the peace and quiet rather than sort of missing us. But um, we knew we knew what we had. We got ahead on the project, so it was really cool. Obviously, we put that love you, that love actually thing up yeah, and that that sketch that leaked a bit about MSK Mag and Jim had snuck in a, a small version of the logo even into that sketch and stuff oh, that people that. had noticed. And yeah, it's like <laughs> sort of little. It's just fun to be fun. And then on on Christmas Eve to to drop the cover. Um, was amazing and the response better than we could have ever hoped because we were meant to go like completely dark then go live on the first with the cover so we we're going to maybe do the logo mm -hmm. but then by the by the because we were ahead and it's like why not and we we're excited and then people have been asking because of the love actually sketch sketch which had gone well we put that out there and so then to have pro to have started the year on the subscriber counts that, uh, that we could have never have uh, expected and, and and was ahead of never ahead of schedule and so people saying yeah you to actually get it out on time as a project is cool but to actually then be almost ahead with it was really smart so it feels a huge relief you always want to try and make sure you don't end up lulling a little bit you know it's it, it one of the things that was cool because sometimes we do that is you, if you just sort of just limp over the line mm -hmm. You then, you, you know, that unfortunately was the start line. You got limp over a start line. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, but this was quite nice is that we, we actually, the, 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 you know, we, we deadline was 20th, whatever it was, 19th, wasn't it? And then, then the leak that on Christmas Eve. And so, therefore, by the time it got to the first, we were rested up and started to, and, and so we we're able to really get going this week. And it's, it's just so exciting. It's so exciting. I, um, actually, um, I wish I had, I should have, 
thought to have it but we've just sent some out we got some print copies as well for promo so there's one in the post here and uh they arrived yesterday so there's just some really cool momentum around that and i just as i said in my editorial for it uh, which i read on the physio matters podcast feed yesterday um it, it's just i do think that it will be an opportunity for us to all have some content in common again and i think that the fracturing and the tribalism that is occurring oh it's always occurring across all different spheres and stuff but if we are going to try and unify around sort of rehab centric msk practice and really advance our style of care we know that part of that is to better empathize as we've just described so having things in common having understand starting to share professional experiences business practices competence as well as clinical content and just having that shared identity that, that maybe could convalesce around uh, a, a product and obviously i'm not going to pretend that of course i'd rather it be be this and be mine because i think it's a good idea but also because i think that um it, it's it's commercial success would be good for the industry because i know that we will get keep you know any advertisement well I, I know that we will look after um the community well and we've many a shared project that this would help fund and so they, you know I, I massive bias of course but that's one of the things that most excites me i cannot ever just count the beans or count the numbers because i just look on and see i know what that could unlock mm -hmm. i know what things we're keeping down because we can't either afford the time or or money to do that would enhance everything else if it works and so that's one of the things that's always forever exciting for me so yeah thanks for your involvement so far it's only just getting started i've just signed off the feb pieces and and and, and commissioned the march pieces and stuff it's so cool so there's some really good stuff planned um how did it feel contributing to it because it was it's a weird one when you invite someone like when you were invited first to tune it over to therapy live to anything that we've ever done together and they've existed they've been things that you could look at other episodes for and stuff so this was the first time we'd approach you on a promise it's like 10 years ago when i approached lee herrington about a podcast but what the hell's a podcast <laughs> we'd heard about you know and so i had to, I, he had to give up his time on a on a on a whim really yeah um no good question and i mean firstly you wrote a very detailed um document for you know if anyone is listening and thinking of uh, that they'd like to contribute in the future. Jack's put together a really comprehensive document that details um, not just, you know, use this font and um, this number of words and stuff. There's a lot of detail about the style. And and uh, for me personally, that bit was reassuring because it entirely, that's how I like to write anyway. Um, you know, if you'd said to me, Joe, write an academic paper with 50 references and, and you know, don't spell anything wrong and, and don't put any opinions in there, um, that would have been much more daunting. So I suppose to an extent it fed into the way I would like to communicate. Um, but I think um, an unusual thing about you and Jim is that you're able to, to tread this line beautifully of um, being quite natural and human and, you know, always bringing humour into things and, and always bringing yourselves into things. But, you know, everybody listening, these guys put so much detail in the background and things are not left to chance and um the fun is never far away but I, I think you're actually both really really good at um really making sure that something something is produced with a real quality um you, you don't leave stuff to chance but you are happy to let things run naturally and i think that that's actually a really hard line to tread and i think you both do it brilliantly no, that's so, really that's really kind and really reassuring because I think that's one of the things and I think it even says in the writer's guide that the done badly we give too much parameters so that people's freedom can't express yeah but then but then similarly too far the other way in that people feel unmoored and and therefore the contributors are going to feel at a loss especially if then this heavy editing that then comes down the pike you'd rather do it front end than back end yeah how did that feel how did it feel when my red pen went across it but, but. absolutely fine um I, I mean i don't know maybe you're asking the wrong person because i don't particularly get upset about things like that and i don't i don't particularly worry about putting myself out there either um mm. you know perhaps if, if somebody was a little more nervous um yeah um, so yeah you gave me feedback uh, actually it was really helpful because you helped me expand on some ideas and i think you picked out some thoughts that i was having but I probably, you know, when you you know what you're saying, so you paraphrase too much, um, and then some of the stuff yeah. that you you did actually 
maybe explain a bit more what I was trying to say. Um, so now I found it all, I found it all fun. <laughs> you were brilliant for that, though. That That's the thing is that I think that there's no moment that I've celebrated more, including the launch, the release, the cover, creating receiving the print copy as i did yesterday and all of these were little merry jig moments but the biggest one uh, i think Shar sean noticed it in me what, what, what's just what are you grinning at and i was like they've all just taken like less so with yours i can't remember because uh, i wasn't ruthless with any of it but I, wording being direct and editing people's work of which are voluntarily contributing to a new piece of which is not proven mm. There were some quite some quite pointed points, including to you know you guys, actual experts in this stuff, right? Rather than little old me generalist. So the response to that, and the way in which you all then it, for my elevated your pieces based on that feedback. That's the merry that the biggest merry jig big grin moment for me, like mm -hmm. above all else. And and it was like I remember it being like, what are you, what are you beaming for? Yeah, Charlotte really noticed it in me. I was just like, because that was the biggest relief is that if we can if we can get the writer's guide right. Give the creative the creative people the parameters to, to to thrive, but then also be able to contribute post hoc appropriately in ways that doesn't make them see their ass or feel over over scrutinized. Doesn't mm. feel like you're bringing their piece down at all, but you give suggestions that then elevates it in keeping with what we're all after. And they, in in each case, thank me for it. I was just like, right, okay, I'm I'm if if it can get this won't continue forever and a day. I'm going to make mistakes in this direction, but for the first issue, for it to not. You know, for it to not be the case at all with all the guest writers was unbelievable feeling. Well, so, I know one of yeah. the biggest things you've always had, um, and actually I've more recently heard Nicola Graham articulate the same thing, is just this real wish to get to a place in physio and, and wider healthcare where we can disagree and we can we can correct each other and we can make, elevate each other without getting offended. Um, and, you know, my, you and I, spoke at length when we first met and my take on it was a little bit more I want us to be able to be honest with each other and, and more vulnerable with each other but it's it's two sides of the same coin really isn't it and it's mm. a mag you know I actually was going to ask you at the start what is it about this platform with the mag that you think is is going to bring us together as opposed to ways that we've sort of polarized in the past but you know I think you've just explained it a little bit um it's you know it is a it's a platform for people to come and be quite honest about how they feel and also be be challenged and corrected and and ideas developed um and I yeah i think i think i want particularly but i want better yeah i want better but, but i think the written form could really be a resurgent way in which they will they will need the a resurgence in professional debate but without it being so short form like social media is that it could get yeah. so snarky because you're not going to you're just not going to have the capacity to do that or you've taken the pace off it by design even if you were to respond imagine someone wrote a response piece to yours a month later <laughs> it's going to inevitably be it's going to soften it so even if it was trying to be quite mm -hmm. sharp and pointed it just can't be at the pace because the, the pace is so fast now that this takes it off so i think that that's one of it um one, one thing i i tell you what though MSK Mag was meant to be the freshest, most exciting thing in, in our space. And then you and Joe Elphiston announced your retreat, right? So <laughs> that 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 is nice cruel. Segue, if anything, I, if ever we were gonna fall, if ever we were gonna fall out, that was the ultimate thunder steal. So tell tell us a bit about that, because that looks absolutely class. Yeah, well, Joanne and I got on a call and I'm like, God, Jack and Jim are doing something big. What can we possibly do to steal their thunder? <laughs> that, that is not true at all. <laughs> so anybody that's listened to my um, Yumata episode with Joanne last year, will <laughs> it was just an unashamed You just love. fell in love. Yeah. You did, absolutely. <laughs> like, so, so, yeah, I love that you've started from there. It's like, well, well, I met this lady who I fell in love with a few uh, on air a few yeah. months ago. Yeah, well, that is that exactly what I would have said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we came off the back of that and just went, well, we, we've got to do something together. And, you know, that was quite busy and just left that for a while. And um, when did we pick it up? Um, we crossed paths again for some reason. I can't remember this part of the story. Anyway, um, we started talking about, no, no, yeah, get it right, Joe. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's funny. I've just come off a coaching call with someone talking about presenting and, and content in a you know a teaching session. So I'm just quite nervous about it. And I was laughing about this meme that I'd seen um, of this woman talking to another lady going, right, have you written your talk yet? And the woman goes, no, but I've decided what I'm wearing. And I was like, yeah, I can so identify with that, the outfit first. Um, and so... <laughs> Joe, Joanne and I met for coffee and we started talking about venues and um, we were talking about how we get a bit frustrated when you you hear about these really great events and then you turn up in some really boring corporate hotel and you feel a bit shortchanged. And so we started saying, oh, you know, I, I, it really I prefer to be in places that actually have some heart and speak to you. And if we were going to do something, we'd want to make sure it was this kind of venue. And then we started talking a little bit about what we, we might do, but then... It came about that Ian, my husband, had discovered through his tree work randomly this um, place called Hawkwood College in Stroud. And it's an old sort of arts and crafts manor house. And it's got a whole story behind it with the people that bought it and the you know, various reasons it's become this real centre for um, challenging conversation, if you like, bringing groups together that want to try and move things forward and shift things. And it happens to be in the beautiful Stroud Valleys. I don't know if you know Stroud, but Stroud's got a reputation. Stroud is actually a, people say, oh, it's a bit Stroudy. And it means um, sometimes it's a little bit bohemian, a little bit out there, but it, it's also a kind of, yeah, a little bit different. And mm -hmm. so I visited and then I just messaged Joanne and said, right, I found the venue, we've got to do something. She came along. And then while we were there, we started talking about what we wanted to um to sort of address around this idea of clinical masks and you know initially we were talking about how clinical masks might be just a negative thing but then then we started thinking about the more positive aspects of masks and actually looking at some some pictures of really amazing masks and going well actually you know it's not all negative and there's always a mask just like there's always judgment um, and then this this idea of this mini retreat where people um we can help people look at the masks they may have worn in the past clinically, uh, why they might have put them on, what, how that served them at the time, and then move it on through the course of the retreat. So how has your life changed? What What's changed? Do you still need that mask? Do you need something else? Do you need something new? Um, and you know, we realised that wasn't going to be just a morning workshop. Um, that was something where we'd need to be together and have deeper discussions. And I'm sure other topics will get brought in around the idea of masks but it was a very over overused word organic but the whole process we've been laughing about oh we just it just feels like we're playing with this and we're following where it's taking us and i guess that's the nature of how we want the retreat to be as well no that's cool yeah really emergent isn't it mm. it's just that these the, these these problems amongst us and when you find someone of which you agree especially in the main on analysis and then the suggested solutions to it feel like they converge, then oh, that's a perfect recipe for collaboration, isn't it? So yeah, um, no, I'm so excited to see how that develops and, and such a, a lovely blossoming relationship to my favorite <laughs> Joes. And there are many, there are many, I, I did a LinkedIn post last year, didn't I about that? Yeah, Noticing yeah. that you two were many, what two of like 20 uh, Joe's in this network that are, that are, are, are brilliant. So yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting to see. I've not heard that about it being a bit stroudy, but that sounds pretty good. I don't <laughs> think I'm, I'm maybe just not cool enough, am I? I mean, well, I'm, I'm not sure. Not, if you have not, to be not, cool not hippy, not hippie, <laughs> hip, hip or hippie enough. Uh, but yeah, no, that's brilliant. So when when is it? It is um, April the twenty fifth to the twenty seventh. Um, and yeah, we've we've only got a few places left actually. So if people are interested, then um, we'll, we'll stick out a few more posts and adverts. But do get in touch and um, yeah. listen to this and think they would like to be involved. It's funny because I often think, in especially at the moment with the mag and stuff, I think in terms of content, and I just think it's such a funny thing for me to look on at that, hear about it inevitably know what sort of things will be elicited that are going to be very per very developing for people personally but also just the nature of you two as people as well as the delegates you'll attract just i know the energy that that would harness that could then really change things forward so then i've got to resist the instinct to go and book the place uh and broadcast it and stream it do you know what i mean because it's of course mm -hmm. not that but it's just that it's still exciting even though i know that of course we're not going to cast it and that's not what it's for just 
what could the the, the the art of the possible what could happen what could emerge what relationships and collaborations could emerge from that what future retreats what um in the spirit of of, of a think tank in a sense as to what would, what yeah, would develop you, for, well, again, my, emergently you're not you're not stealing anything you're, you're following my train of thought exactly that you're know, just being that place you and i've talked a lot about you know just we just get people in the same place because we're all having these amazing conversations all around the country and all around the world and saying so many of the same things. And yeah, I agree. It's um, you, you can't solve everything in, in one place, but I don't know. There's something about certain locations and um, yeah, not even say certain people, because actually I think it is sometimes just bringing people together to a place that inspires in some way can be, can be really, really, it's interesting and it, yeah no my mind had already gone there yeah you, where, where is this gonna go oh, next my, uh, well you know and, but that's the thing is that the, the, the ultimate contrast in any in any conversation or moment as well as then when you look on at something like that that's exciting to happen is that you've always got to just trade off sensibly about the po what might be without overindulging that in such a way that you miss the moment like it's the mm -hmm. classic sort of registering uh you know making sure you take take a photograph for posterity or, or, or take a video for making sure it's then got legs without compromising your experience in the moment that's not an easy trade i don't, personally don't find that an easy trade-off i, I think there's you. been times where i've been like oh yeah immediate you know it's it's, um, it's been so trendy that the pictures of there's a really famous picture of everyone with their phones out and an old lady being present in the moment as a procession goes by i can't remember what it is right yeah. and um and it's lovely and it's a great point about you know uh that we're hiding behind his phones etc i've then made the mistake at times of going too far that way it's been like just being hyper present but I did want a photograph of that moment. The, the, mm. the right amount of those things, you know, especially with regards back, back to the kids again and stuff. It's like, um, and you know this more than most is, uh, is is that I've needed that, needed to be more, be more in the room. But then I, yeah, I've I've seen only a bit, but seen a bit where I've, I'm 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 too in the room and there's no no moments of which I can mm. reflect and remember that moment. Um, where some sure I have probably better memories than me and it doesn't matter, but sometimes I do want to try and register that and that others would benefit greatly if I'd have taken that rather than me explaining something that happened, I could have easily captured it. And why didn't I? And, mm. you know, that's such an interesting one. And I think yeah. that when I'm reflecting on your, on your uh, retreat, it's going to be really exciting to see if you can get that balance of, 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 of it being, truly immersive but also having this little ps you know this little afterword this little what might come next what yes. might emerge even and from that else. which is yeah. quite cool yeah, yeah i said to ian we were walking a couple of days ago and we were talking about new year um and you know inevitably the resolutions conversation comes up and i said to him actually i really feel like i want to i want to glide with this year and he said well what do you mean and i said well i'm such a driver i could i drive things all the time and you know, sometimes I push too hard. I get an idea and it's got to be done now or, you know, it's, you know, I've, or I've got to do something. And I maybe I was reflecting a bit on this experience with Joanne, but um, other things as well have just gone quite well recently where I just feel like I'm riding it rather than driving it. And I like that feeling. Actually, one big transition for me, which I've talked about a lot on Me Hub and New Matter, is I turned 50 at the end of last year. And... I've I've felt so much more <coughs> excuse me been so much more aware of that transition than I was in, to being forty. I know it's quite unexpected actually. I, I've not been prepared for quite a change in my thought processes, and one of those changes does seem to be this: like I'm tired of driving, and I'm not certainly not tired of life, no way. But I I tired of starting everything and feeling like I need to be the energy behind everything. Um, mm. and, and that's definitely definitely quite a new feeling quite a nice feeling and gliding's a nice phrase for it mm. people sometimes you know when you're driving <clears> this <throat> coasting like when you put your clutch down mm. and you're coasting to a roundabout where that famously out of control whereas gliding has used the initial energy and then he's still in full control and it's not really behaving any differently to what another craft would be so i, I like that analogy and i can see that working you some of that has just emerged i, I read a really interesting but when i say i read a book is that of course i've read bits of it and then add the audiobook um but i still just say i read and, and i didn't um i read a couple of op-eds then i listened to a couple of podcasts and then i read the audio uh, got the audiobook and read maybe two chapters but anyway there's this and i can't remember the actual title of the book but the sort of i think it's the subline is um 
from uh, from maiden to mother to matriarch, and it's talking about the life course of uh, this a sociological life course of of, 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 of women. It's not Hagitude, is it? Because that's the book I just read. It's what? Sorry. Is it? It's the book called Hagitude. No, 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 no. I didn't, I didn't know what you, know, you just made then. That wasn't a word. I thought, <laughs> Haggitude, just, being a hand. You just, you just sneezed or something. Like that. Haggitude. <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, no, but yeah, um, maiden, maiden to mother to matriarch, and and so what you what what she would say you're describing to some extent is this interesting transition, which always is into into play, and the, but but it's just that the that not that you ever you know, suddenly stop needing to be a will be a mother, but it's more that then the, the, the is a is a life transition as to as mm. to your kids are, are soon to be flying the nest and they're in that transitionary phase of adulthood themselves is that then it's just what is your then role as a matriarch and you probably your your direct initiative and in, impetus is going to not you know be be less required and if your identity was just tied up in that if you were the, just the life soul the driving force of which you are you obviously force of nature but it isn't all of you and you yeah. have got these other energies and so then to be to be a matriarch is to then you've look what you've grown both professionally and personally, that then can be that driving force. So um, I might probably, uh, I'm, 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 I don't know if I'm giving a good blurb to this book, uh, but but I think you'd like it. Um, and and it's it's certainly something that um, I obviously can't give any really direct direct uh, empathy to that that life course because you're obviously seven times older than me. But I obviously <laughs> can, uh, having having at least read that recently, I can sort of recognise yeah. what you're on about and something that that you probably don't notice when a transition like that is upon you until it's upon you. You wouldn't have seen it coming, would you? No, and I'd go back to my 40-year-old self or anybody nearer 35, 40 listening now and say, yeah, don't worry, it's actually really cool. I, I'd have I'd have thought then, oh, gosh, that, I'm going to watch out for that because that's be, that'll be the time when I start to feel a bit sad because I'm losing some of my energy and you know, kids are flying the nest and stuff. It, don't get me wrong, I, I will miss my kids hugely, but... I feel really positive about it and, and genuinely not just doing the lip service of yeah. oh, these days we're all supposed to be positive about being on it genuinely <laughs> feels feels really good <laughs> no, fair, but i'll give you credit for that it's funny because if you remember back to our very very early conversations including on air where i was like some of the people in in, in sort of the, the, the sort of coaching counseling type space and stuff i was, I was like it's like pop positive psychology and stuff yeah. toxic positivity type stuff and you've, you, you know, it's just funny you even saying that is i don't want to say this because i'd expect to it's like you won't need to worry about that anymore joe even <laughs> i've stopped even i've stopped trying to uh make sure that and you that mitigate that you know it used to be like every every couple of conversations just unnecessarily i'd just be like oh, but we don't get, want to get carried away though do we no one gets like, who's getting carried away? Like, eventually, you didn't. You, you should have just snapped. And just be like, who's getting carried away? What are you on about? How long? Yet? But I have stopped saying that. I hope you've noticed. I've, I've, I've stopped saying <laughs> you've that. You've chilled now. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you do. but I think that's because you've, well, because you've proven it. Right? That's one of the things that's cool. Is that I, I, I stand by why I was concerned. Not about you, but just my sort of allergy to where that goes too far. And it just ruins, ruins good good yeah. not just good content but good people get carried away on that theme and and so the fact that you haven't is great but also just that to watch the the fruits of that labor and the and the the the, the accuracy of which you've delivered a message without getting carried away on a theme or to be reflective and to walk things back or to to just go on a really authentic journey means that then what you will go on to produce in 2024 and beyond and what you've produced in msk mag as an example again uh is and what we're going to be able to do um yeah, shall we shall we admit to what's your next piece we should admit yeah. that shouldn't we yeah shall we tell to. them what, what's yeah, coming next what's your, what's your uh what's your uh superhero name for msk mag then <laughs> i am going to be anti-version uh, the MSK Mags Agony Art I should have practiced that before right. I said it yes and, I and I'll admit that Jack made that brilliant name up anti-version <laughs> I love that we've got we you know we said about with um, the Chewy and Jim uh, podcast and stuff you yeah. start, start with a funny pun name and then retrofit yeah. a feature I exactly. can't think that that was the case we were like we should have an Agony Art and that would be actually really interesting it'd be a bit of fun but also it'd be really valuable content i think that people mm. do need that and want that there is something to be said for a bit of a need for a cry for help in a few different domains but what would our agony amp be and so anti-version yeah we, we 
yeah, it spoiled the meeting because we just chuckled then for the rest of it. Um, <laughs> and, and also that I've told you, haven't I, about our features writer, Glenn O'Humeral. Yes, that's um, brilliant. <laughs> which is going to be a really ranty pseudonym piece that's going to be anything that's too spicy that anyone wants to put their name to. It's going to be like really edgy. Oh, really? So, yeah, um, not just not just humoral silly stuff. It's going to be actually like, yeah, that's where, you know, um, like gossip columns and stuff on New Statesman and, and Steer Pipe for the... Uh, for the um, spectator they, they're yeah. pseudonym, famous pseudonyms that are multiple different people underneath them but just don't want to put their name to what it'll they're be saying. really fun trying to guess who who the people are that contribute yeah no them. i think that people will just continue to because you're the other pseudonym supposedly <laughs> like yeah. um, then people will probably just think it's joe you've got this like alter <laughs> ego yeah like, oh, she's pleasant on the agony ant columns anti-version's really nice but then the jekyll to the hide or whichever way it round is he's just like joe then <laughs> rants as glenn or humoral <laughs> That would be quite fun. But yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for that. And I think that that would be another, I suppose, do you agree with what I've just said there, that there is a, a kind of, as much as we're having fun with it, there is a there is a bit of a serious need for an MSK Agony Ant in, in a few different domains? Yeah, yeah. And I think um, you've looked at some of the questions that have come up because of the first um, version of that's coming out in the second edition, isn't it? And yeah, mm. it, it absolutely. Um yeah, I, I do think there's a need and um, I hope I'll be up to the job of addressing it in a way that does enough. Because it's a really, you know, it's a it's a short, the agony answer is a short thing and there's only so much you can say. And, you know, I can see it's going to be quite challenging for me to be able to um, understand the problem in, in, you know, in the short form that it's presented to me, present a reasonable stab at the answer um and you know where post where necessary signpost on um you know i think it can only often be an introduction to an answer um and i i actually beat myself up when i started playing with that i was thinking oh this is not co-training because i'm you know giving answers i'm giving opinions um but i think to be really overt about that and say you know this is like i said in the intro this is my best guess and, and i hope yeah. that will be helpful but i think yeah having a place to anonymously present the things that, if they're bugging you, they will be bugging somebody else, however you know weird or obscure or personal you think they are. So I think it would be a really useful part of the mag. And yeah, the, uh, the whole mag is, a, so far it looks like it's going to be a lovely mixture of really quite serious content, but presented in a in a way that can be absorbed and digested. And and it won't be scary to to challenge it and ask questions about it which is brilliant. No, that's good. I mean, we want to take the content seriously, or the subject matter seriously, but not ourselves. It, that's a great trying to make sure way of we do. It. Yeah? yeah, it's like, because it is, there's some, some really important and great work we can do. But there's also a recipe for collective burnout is for us to just then think that the, the pain and suffering and, and, not, and even sort of death and depression that can exist in, in and around our space, we're in healthcare in yeah. a difficult sociological time with wars ravaging right it's, it's, it's shit serious of course mm -hmm. it is um and, and equally that done badly levity you know you you guys at you matter you on you matter you covered brilliantly like gallows humor and, and, and sort of the interesting intersection there which is it was really really tastefully done and i think that then if we were clumsy with it and it was just littered with 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 puns and silliness or or, or banter then, then that would be really, really not capturing the moment. But then, okay. similarly, it doesn't need to be dour. And I think that, to be honest, one of the reasons that we decided to do MSK Mag is because we, especially in our early days of physio matters, and I think just generally, we are very nerdy for the evidence, right? Mm -hmm. And so then, evidence is not a synonym for data for research. Evidence can come in all sorts of different ways, and the opinion and the way in which that can come doesn't need to be just in an interesting op-ed at the front of a journal of which you didn't read because you didn't want to read the data. <laughs> so <laughs> op-eds and opinion pieces that can exist on their own and stand and then be referencing material and then to be challenged, it's like just allowing ourselves to be a bit more casual with that. I think we've all yeah. been trying to prove ourselves as individuals and as professionals to then just need to speak an academic language that I don't think is necessarily well suited to many of us. And those that, that one of the things that's brilliant about this first issue is that someone who is you know very academically literate and very capable you know, PhD, of course, someone like Derek Griffin, right in such a, such a great piece that really mm -hmm. warms to a subject matter and reflects on his own who's and ours 
but then there's nothing anti-intellectual about both no. him as a writer, of course, him as a thinker, and then the piece itself. So I think that needle can be threaded and threaded, 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 it's not a it? threaded, thread, <laughs> it's a thread. needle being thread. thread. Um, <laughs> And 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 I and I and I hope so. And I think it's made me realise as well, which is why it's cool to do this today, is that it's like I can't think of a better set of opportunities for the ever closer union of our projects, our shared project in the macro, but also like it's just so obviously a, a, a perfect marriage, perfect family type thing, isn't it? Where there's just the, it's more compatible than I could have ever known. We always knew it was. We never felt like a strange, strange mix. But now it's just like, yeah, we, we, the, the, the the goals have always been shared. But now it just feels like that, you know, that content. It's like that. That's a that's a space of which you obviously feel, but it overlaps more than it's offer any distinction. And then similarly, you've always been brave enough to not hide from the clinical. Like that's what so many of your contemporaries will do is just imply that there's no relevance to clinical changes. Mm -hmm. Whereas in your piece in the mag, sorry, I keep touting it, but in your piece in the mag, you, you're you accepting that one of the variables that are making people conscious of that, that is affecting their internal mental health and risk of burnout is the fact that there is paradigm shifts left, right and center, which mm. would upend anyone. Mm. Um, so, you know, it, it, I doubt accountants are having to face that down every five minutes. So, whereas yeah. in MSK therapies, you know, can you be a, believe how different our practices from That's 10 years, sense. there's no firm ground. So to, if you were to, like many do, you know, I'm in this sort of coaching psych help space. I'm going to hide from the clinical realities of MSK practice changing and weren't in touch with your finger on the pulse of that and caring about that. Then, yeah, you'd be so, you would be far less both of an agony aunt as well as obviously a coach. So it's just really cool for me to look on and think, right, all of the the, the journey we're all on, it just, it does feel, because it could easily go the other way, couldn't it? It could, it, it, it wouldn't be acrimonious, wouldn't it? It's just like, it just feels like we're in different places. Now, Joe's doing this sort of retreat over here. It doesn't feel like it's, and we were, we're going, say we had a gone like where we're starting a journal, <laughs> you know, we went really hyper academic for some reason, It'd be strange, but we could have done or or what have you. Then maybe that would have, that could have been, but instead it just feels like it's such a really interesting, both parallel and converging track, which, yeah, it's exciting to see what we do both independently and together uh, this year. The tangled web now, I think. <laughs> we won't break That's it true. Up. Be difficult to that'd be difficult to <laughs> unpick, wouldn't it? For sure. But yeah, thanks for all you do. And uh yeah, I'm glad, we, I'm glad we're able to get this together on the, the hectic first week back. It's always mad, isn't it? Yeah, well I hope it goes well. And I'm I'm actually um, going for circling back to the start of conversation. I'm gonna do one more day of asking people if they had a nice Christmas and wishing them a happy new year, and then I'm done. So apologies if it's up if I talk to you after tomorrow, you're not getting that question. Yeah, well, I, 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 um, I, you know, I really wanted to try to not finish on a massively slow, projected and profound point. But mm -hmm. happy New Year, Joe. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> happy Xmas. <laughs> oh yeah, nice one. You ruined it. Oh, well, Hyperventilating. We'll do my Hail Marys now. <laughs> See you, Jack. See you later. Uh, that was a, another fun conversation with my mate Jack. Uh, I hope it was fun for you too. Uh, I hope it was helpful to get a little bit more information about the brilliant MSK Merg that Physio Matters have just released. If you haven't seen the first edition yet, then um, get yourself a, an online copy or even a, um, you get an actual physical copy if you subscribe, if you're one of the first, I don't know, first 50 that subscribe. So uh, get onto that if you haven't already. Um, yeah, and it was... Uh, Great, great kind of Jack to ask me about the upcoming retreat that I'm doing in April with Joanne Elphinstone. Um, and uh, yeah, to think about some of the things that I would like to talk about on New Matter, but actually I would also love to know what you would like me to be talking about on New Matter this year, um, what guests you'd like me to invite on and what conversations you think need to be had uh, in healthcare and between clinicians. You can get hold of Jack uh, through lots and lots of channels. Um, he's Jack Chu on LinkedIn and on X. Um, but if you look at anything under Physio Matters, then you'll you'll find lots of um, lots of his stuff very easily. And of course, you can get hold of me uh, either uh, Joe Turner on LinkedIn, me have underscore Joe on X. Or you can just go to the Mehab website, which is mehab.co.uk. 
So whatever your reflections are on the end of 2023 and whatever you are looking forward to in 2024, I hope that it's a nice, gentle um, gliding start for you in 2024. Let's all do a bit of gliding together. Take care. Oh, almost forgot. If you are a clinician just heading out into this new year, uh, thinking about all the things that you might be able to do in your work, your businesses, your families, your communities. Do take some time. Self-care is an absolutely imperative part of that process. You can't do any of those things in, unless you are looking after yourself. Do remember that you matter. <laughs>